Hey guys, I guess you can probably tell from what's on the screen there what I've been doing. Yeah, been out here this afternoon after I got out from work uh, trying to get this thing wet sanded one last time. And it seems like every time I sand it, I find another little pinhole or some little imperfection that I missed. It seems like the finer grit I sand down to, the more stuff I find. Uh, hopefully I've about got the uh, driver's side door. It was the worst. The passenger's door, I actually got pretty good shape. Uh, just letting it get all dried out and stuff. Uh, so hopefully I'm not too far away from paint. I went ahead and started wet sanding the car uh, with 600. I've got the, uh, the deck lid done and didn't see any obvious places. I got the rear bumper cover done. Uh, it's still drying out uh, from the water that I used. I just took a sponge and a bucket of water and worked around as best I could. Went down the body side and got all it done. I got the uh, top of the uh, pasture compartment done, the roof. Got it all pretty much squared away. It's not quite dry yet. I've still got to do the uh, hood, the passenger side front fender, and the uh, front grill area. I got the driver side fender done. So I'm hoping that uh, <coughs> everything will uh, kind of work out pretty soon before we get ready to paint this thing. <clears throat> I hope. Uh, the uh, I was talking to uh, Tommy Shue earlier today about the uh, issue with his air compression stuff. And I got to thinking, uh, I talked to him a few minutes ago, and I thought, well, I may have an outlet or something here. He was going to make a video and uh, and I, I definitely want him to ask the rest of you guys, too, to make sure that I'm not mistaken. But I went ahead and took an outlet that uh, I had laying here, and I hooked it up the way we were talking about hooking his up uh, just a minute ago. And I did the same thing. Mine's a little bit different pressure switch than he's got, but mine is 220 as well. If you can see right here, this is uh, my 220 line coming into my air compressor with the black and the white wire on this side of the relay. Then on the other side of the relay, I've got the breaker turned off right now so that you guys can see it whenever I turn it back on. Going out of this side of the relay is the uh, air compressor motor. And uh, he'd actually talked about uh, using one outlet and isolating the upper and lower part. So basically he's got two 110 circuits off of uh, the 220, and that's what I did here. I basically took a white and a black, which matched up with the uh, white and black wires going out of the uh, pressure switch tied black to black, white to white, and then came over here to the same side of the outlet, which ordinarily you wouldn't want to do because that'd be a dead short. But if you see that small gap right there between those two screws, that's called an isolator clip. And you can break those out of the outlet if you do plan on using each of these as a 120 and a 120. Normally they're tied together, so you just have to put one hot wire on one of these screws, and then that powers your outlet. And then on the other side is your, uh, your neutral which I left that one in place because uh, I wanted it to power both outlets for the neutral. You can kind of see it sticking down there in between the screw. But uh, yeah, by taking that tab out of the center, you effectively isolate one outlet from the other. And uh, that's why I've got this one wired up right now. I didn't have any fans up here. I need to get me one for my air compressor as well to keep it from overheating, but I do have two lights hooked up. And I was gonna turn the air compressor on for just a minute. It's going to be kind of noisy, so uh, it'll take just a minute for it to run, and then whenever it shuts off, you'll see that the light shut off and everything will be fine. The uh, whole premise of this was uh, hooking up fans to cool the air compressor, and since this is a 220 circuit running into here, there's not any neutral back to the panel. In a perfect world, yeah, you could run a, a neutral wire only back to your electrical panel if you wanted to, but it's not really... Uh, a preferred practice, but if you look inside of most of your electrical panels, I know mine is because I put it in, the uh, neutral and the ground both tie together inside the box. So effectively, the ground wire is also a lead, uh, path back to your electrical box. So that, in effect, is going to be my neutral for this demonstration because I hooked it to the ground here, and you see the ground coming in from my electrical panel right here. So that's basically the uh, neutral or ground side of your outlet over here. So I'm going to turn you on. I'm sorry for the racket, but uh, we'll see what happens. Turn that around a little bit so you guys don't have to look at all that bright light coming out. But you'll see whenever the uh, air compressor shuts off,
we're probably pulling less than an half a piece. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with this, and if you did effectively have a short, it would trip the circuit breaker in the box. So, yeah, is it a preferred practice? Not really, but we all know sometimes you have to do what you have to do to make things work. So, hopefully that thing will shut off here in just a minute. As you can see, once the pressure switch turned the compressor off, both the lights went out. So that definitely helps, and I'm sure it would keep the compressor cool. I will probably clean this up and mount this outlet somewhere on the side of the uh, compressor after I put my cover back on. And I think I'm going to uh, do as Tommy suggested. I'm sorry, Tommy Shoe suggested, and uh, mount me a fan right here. I actually need to relocate this thing outside. Uh, because it gets powerfully loud in your way you're working and when you're spraying uh, it would probably do better outside as far as air circulation and stuff goes so uh, Dan Electro uh, whenever I was talking to him the other day in his uh, web stream stuff said he wanted a uh, shop tour this is my uh, dungeon for lack of a better word uh, of course as you've all seen there's my air compressor and I've got storage cabinets built all overhead with tons of woodworking stuff that's my other hobby I like building cabinets and uh, furniture uh, woodworking projects uh, you name it so there's a lot of that type stuff up here uh, here's my uh, Ryobi table saw and it's a, just a, a 10 inch but it works really well I've made several projects with it uh, I've got a DeWalt 12 inch uh, compound miter saw that's what I do all my trim and baseboard and uh, other stuff with this table is actually uh, a radial arm saw if you can believe it or not it's buried back here it's a rigid and I've used it on occasion it's pretty handy for a lot of different things particularly when you want to see what cut you're making the only problem with the table saw is the blade is usually covered and the board is facing down if you have to do a blind cut if you're doing a dado or a rabbit or something you can actually have the board facing up where you can see it and uh, pull the saw back across the board so that you can see what you're doing. But you have to be careful with these. They're real dangerous because they tend to kick back or grab if you're not real easy pulling them back through the work. Uh, this is my 12-inch uh, DeWalt surface planer for uh, planing boards to thickness. And there's a, uh, a dust chute that I built out of some MDF to put in it, in the back of it to collect all the shavings. Uh, just assorted sandpaper and you know, just basically all kinds of junk. There's the uh, stud gun I bought at uh, Harbor Freight here a couple of months ago. I used my friends and I liked it so well I went out and bought one. Uh, all my HVAC tools, ductwork tools and stuff, I put those up there. Uh, here's my cubbies I got several years ago. Just all kinds of different loose bolts and connectors and fittings and plumbing stuff that really doesn't have a home anywhere else. I need to go through all this stuff. I'm waiting for when I retire to go through everything and sort it. Uh, this is just a little cabinet. I built some kitchen cabinets for our house and took these out and uh, I repurposed them and put a new top on them. And this is sandpaper and so on and so forth. Uh, here's another section of cabinets I built overhead. I tried to keep everything up where I could kind of walk under it. There's just tons of stuff up here. There's ammunition, uh, uh, more expensive uh, diagnostic tools, my... Uh, Magnetic base, timing light, a lot of the stuff that I don't really want out in the paint fumes. Uh, of course, here's my fridge with all you guys on it. 
Uh, I think I'm going to end up having to take a piece of sheet metal or something and make something because I don't think my uh, door is going to be big enough. I already noticed after watching Greg Porter putting his stickers on his uh, uh, locker door that I'm going to have to probably have something a lot bigger. Up here is kind of where I keep a lot of my manuals for the uh, yard equipment stuff. At one time, I also kept all of my Hanes and Chilt manuals up there as well, but I've, I've kind of overgrown it. I need to build some more storage. This has turned into kind of a, a catch-all. Of course, here's my uh, Craftsman toolbox. It's not a very large one, but it's served me well. Between that and all these other cubby holes, uh, I tend to collect stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a pack rat. I'm not ashamed to say it because the one time I throw something away, I guarantee I'll need it later. Uh, Pull out bins with different assortment of wire, uh, wiring devices, uh, loose nuts and bolts and things of that nature. Uh, my drill press. I built a table for it out of MDF and actually tried to make it kind of like a machinist table with uh, two rabbits and stuff in it. And I've got a uh, piece here somewhere that actually slides back and forth on these two rabbits so that you can do like milling applications side to side. But I can't remember what I did with it. It's buried under some of this stuff. Uh, old engine block out of a 302 that the cylinder was damaged. It's now a counterweight for my drill press. And of course there's my clock and the uh, matrix thermometer. Up here is where I store most of my uh, spray bombs, uh, cleaning up, uh, cleaning chemicals. I'm sorry guys, kind of tongue-tied. Uh, wax, glue, uh, paint, reducer, and so forth. I also have some more tools over here on this side. Here's my workbench, or at least what you can see of it for the moment. It's it's a disgrace in here. I need to take the next couple of days when I'm off and clean up in here. This is more like the automotive type tools, uh, mechanical and stuff like that. Uh, just a, a wide assortment of everything. I'm a toolaholic. There's only two kinds of tools, basically. Got them and need them. Uh, spray guns, uh, so forth. This is a bunch of old shelving that uh, I was pretty lucky when they were shutting the kitchen down below us. Uh, I went down there and scavenged a lot of the shelving and stuff, and as you can see, it's full of all kinds of stuff. There's car parts. Uh, here's my uh, Lincoln Buzz box, if you can actually tell what it is. It's buried amongst all this stuff. Uh, that's why I didn't want to dig it out to, to do that welding on that uh, sheet metal break, because I was going to have to move all this stuff. At some point, I need to clean up in here desperately. Uh, there's rags. Uh, boxes of magazines and stuff that I've collected over the years of articles and stuff. And of course in all these trim and everything for Brian's Mustang. Here's two sets of seats. One of them is actually a set of seats that go back in my Mustang and the other one is a set out of another Trans Am that a fellow gave me that he was parting out. So I've got spares for that 85 I've got sitting outside. Again here's just more uh, stuff. This thing's pretty handy. When I reload ammunition, you uh, take your spent cartridges, your brass, and put them in here and tumble them in that, and it actually polishes the brass. Right now, I've got sand in it for polishing bolts and stuff, and it works real well. It's a lot easier than trying to sandblast them. Uh, I've also got a cheapy Harbor Freight powder coating system, and I've, that's what I bought that oven sitting over there for. Once I get Brian's car done, I'm going to give that a shot and see how that works out. Uh, probably can't even tell, but there's the GT40 heads that are going to be going on my Mustang. Uh, there's one and the other one's actually in the box underneath that I got them off of eBay. There's also the box down here with the GT40 intake. Uh, just miscellaneous pieces of my Mustang. This is a, uh, a portable uh, jointer for jointing the edges of uh, wood. And then here is a, uh, oh, let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Oh man. Here's a uh, belt sander with a disc sander on the side of it, which is kind of like the one that uh, Darren picked up uh, from his mom's house the other day. It's real similar. Very handy when you're doing woodworking to uh, sand the edges of boards down and stuff to get them good and flush. Uh, this thing here is a uh, biscuit joiner. Now if I could find a gravy stretcher to go with it, I'd be a happy man. <laughs> but basically this just cuts a slot into the uh, edge of a board with the blade and instead of using dowels you use these little uh, football shaped biscuits and uh, you use these notches and everything to line everything up and that basically is a lot stronger and a lot more accurate than using the dowels then over here is my woodworking bench uh, of course you can't really see it now because it's covered in stuff too and this is more of like my woodworking type stuff 
uh, chisels for my uh, lathe, my wood lathe I've got outside, and uh, carving chisels, uh, tack hammers, uh, bevel gauges, rubber mallets, uh, air staplers. So, of course, I got a few oddball stuff up here. I got my old welding helmet and a uh, Sears clock, and of course, this is where I decided to hang my spray guns because they're kind of over here out of the way, so I wouldn't knock them off. Uh, of course, this is one of the most important items you can have in your shop. Fire extinguisher. I've got several set in here. I've got one about every corner just in case. Uh, let's see. This is a lot of my woodworking tools that are still in the case. Pipe threader. Uh, like I said, just, just a little bit of everything. Right now it's in a shamble, so you really can't tell what is in here. Then some of my larger machine tools and stuff are back here. This is actually a stationary jointer. Uh, I think it's a 8 inch. Oh, no, 6 inch. Sorry. Uh, rabbiting joiner. It's Harbor Freight also. I've got it covered up and uh, coated in grease to keep it from rusting. Uh, here's my uh, dust collector for my woodworking. Hook it up to your uh, table saw joiner or anything like that to uh, collect all the shavings and the sawdust so you're not breathing them in. Then back here behind that, which you can barely see, it, is my parts washer. It's uh, I think a 20 gallon. It's plenty large enough for what I'm doing. Of course, this is a two-car garage with two garage doors, but you can tell you can't even get out this side. So then, uh, let's see, this is all my refrigeration tubing and stuff for when I'm doing HVAC work. Uh, oxyacetylene gauges that I've got that one I've got to repair. The gauge is broken on it. Uh, so, I mean, everywhere you look, I've got stuff crammed in here. I've probably got three garages worth of stuff just in this little building. It's 24 by 24 with an 8-foot ceiling. And as I've told you guys before, every piece and part that's not down here on the floor or on the shelf for this car, except for the fenders and the doors, is up here in the attic. This is also where we store a lot of our Christmas stuff. Uh, of course, you guys saw me when I built the sheet metal break. I got it set in here because it's kind of large. It's kind of like a, a coat rack now, a place to lay stuff and set stuff on. And here's my TIG welder. I had to move it over here out of the way. Whenever we brought his car in, it's a 300 amp Heliarc. It's an Airco, but it's basically a, a, a relabeled Miller because you can see right here where the cooler is. It says uh, Cool Made on it, which is Miller's brand. So I've seen several of these on uh, eBay lately for like $3,000. <laughs> so I feel pretty lucky. I got this one for what I did for the deal. And then, of course, here's the Harbor Freight sandblast cabinet that I purchased not too long ago. Kind of buried back in here behind everything is my generator, and I'm sad to say that I've never started it. Uh, I need to put gasoline in it with some stabilizer and actually take it down to my house so if we do have some bad weather, it's not sitting up here where I can't get to it. And, of course, right here between the doors is kind of like my paint catch-all. Uh, a friend of mine uh, goes to a couple of body shops occasionally, and they give him all their paint uh, so they don't have to pay the disposal fee for it, and then occasionally he'll call me. Of course, most of it's RM and... Uh, some of it's Lemco. Of course, some of the stuff I've bought or people have bought when I've repaired their cars. Uh, and that's kind of what I've been working out of, working on uh, Brian's Mustang, so he wouldn't have to buy anything. Then i got regular house paint, building paint stuff, and then down underneath is just kind of a catch-all. And then right here's where my floor jack and everything sits. A uh, piece of railroad iron, or a uh, railroad track that a friend gave me. That makes a really good anvil whenever you need to pound on something because it doesn't move. Uh, battery charger uh, and that's pretty much it I think uh, like I said it's wall to wall with stuff uh, all I can say is when I croak my wife's going to have a real fun time uh, getting rid of all this stuff so well I bored you guys long enough uh, I'll make another video when I got something else to show you guys again and uh, y'all have a great evening see you later